Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace the bearings in your motors. So, after a lot of flight time, after a lot of crashes, the bearings in your motors will probably start to get damaged, the balls in the races can get deformed and even shattered, and that will eventually cause your motors to vibrate. And when your motors are vibrating, it causes accelerated wear and tear on your frame, and it can cause tuning issues such as Jello, which nobody wants. So instead of just buying all new motors to solve that problem, it's a lot more economical, even though it is a little more effort to just go ahead and replace the bearings in your motors because 99% of the time that is where the vibrations are coming from when your motors are vibrating. Sometimes, yes, you can have like a bent motor shaft or a bent bell, but the bearings are usually the weakest link and those will start to fail first. So how do you tell if your bearings are going bad? A really easy first check to do is to just spin the motors by hand and listen to them. So this motor and actually all these motors have bad bearings. So you'll hear two distinct noises. One is a high pitched whining noise, which is just the magnets passing by the stator, which will happen on all motors. And then the second noise is a low pitched like grinding noise. And that is the sound of bad bearings. So one more time. You can also spool up the motors and listen to them that way. And before you go ahead and start tearing the quad apart to replace the motor bearings, I recommend going into your flight controller software and using the motor test function to spool up the individual motors and see which motors are causing the vibrations. Because sometimes you will have noisy bearings, but they're not causing vibrations. And that's really not a big deal. We're just trying to get rid of vibrations mainly. At least that's what I aim to do. So with that said, let's go ahead and see how to change the bearings on your motors. All right, so I've already done one of the motors and just listen to the difference between the sound of these motors. So this is the new one. And then here's a bad one. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and replace some bearings. So first thing you gotta do is obviously take the motor off. All right, so now is a very delicate part of the process. We have to get this screw out of the bottom of the motor. The thread locker on these is really strong, so you may want to like heat this up with a soldering iron to kind of break free that bond. Uh, I'm just gonna be really gentle and try not to break it. It worked for me on the last one, so slowly add force. There we go, and that broke free. And just be careful, don't force it, because the last thing you want is to have that screw stuck in the uh, the shaft of your motor. So I'm actually gonna screw it back in and then screw it back out a little bit because I'm starting to feel resistance. There's like a certain point where I, I meet a lot of resistance. So for this part, just really take your time. Since I've worked that in and out a couple times, now it wants to come all the way out. So just use your best judgment. Don't be too ham-fisted with this part. All right, there we go. So you can see all of that, that thread locker on that screw. And now usually you'll have a spacer in here that you wanna take out and not lose. And it is worth mentioning that some motors don't have the uh, retaining screw. They'll just have like a C-clip or an E-clip. And then you just have to kind of pry that off All right, so we're gonna try not to lose that. Okay, so now we gotta pull the bell of the motor off and this is actually really hard because if you try to hold on to the base and pull the, the bell off, it can be very difficult just cause especially these days, the bases are so tiny. So what you can do is just grab two longer screws and just loosely thread them into the bottom of the base. And now you can grab on this and it's much easier to hold. You can just pull the top right off. 
And now we can get to actually replacing the bearings. We're gonna start off with the bottom one. So on this motor, it's kind of deeper than the base of the motor. Some motors are not like this. So I can just flip this motor this way and pound out the bottom bearing. If your bearing is kind of flush with the bottom of the motor or closer to flush, you can just like put it on a piece of wood with a hole drilled on it. You can balance it on a vise like this, right? With the edges of the base touching this, the jaws, just so you have that gap in the middle. In this case, I don't have to do that. And I'm just gonna use this screw and just pound it out. So I, I put the screw in at an angle so that I'm touching the side of the bottom bearing. And you also wanna kinda of work your way around cause the bearing can rack in there and then you need to force like the, the opposite side out. All right, there we go. Now it's starting to budge. So now the bearing is flush with the bottom, but it's still not coming all the way out. So now I'm gonna balance the base of the motor on the two jaws of this vise and get the bearing the rest of the way out. And there we go. And now the bottom bearing is out. And there's actually like some crud in there. So I'm gonna just wipe that down so that the new bearing goes in smoothly. All right, and now for the top bearing. Uh, last time I could just push it out with a bolt. So let's see if that works again. Um, so now you can use like a much larger implement to push out the other bearing since we got the bottom bearing out. Yep, and it just comes right out. All right, so now both of our bearings are out. Now we're going to put in the new bearings. So I'm going to start with the top one. You just set it in there and just push it in. And these motors are tolerance real nice so that it's just a, a light friction fit. So that's the top bearing. And then similar deal with the bottom bearing. gonna push it in as far as we can get it now be careful with your stator wires at all points during this process because you don't want to cut any of these all right so that's about as far as I can get this bottom bearing in by hand but it's not in far enough so what you can do just take one of your old bearings and use it as a spacer so just place it on top of the old bearing and push All right, I think it's in there. Let's give it a nice push, make sure it's in. And you really wanna use an old bearing for this that's exactly the same size. So that way you're not putting any concentrated stress on a, like a single point on your new bearing because you could actually ruin it that way. So now our new bearings are in. And we just pop the bell back on. Don't forget that spacer. All right, and then you need to put new thread locker on the screw. So I just have some here. So not too much because you don't want the thread locker to like soak into the bearing. Just enough to lightly coat the threads. And then just screw it back in very carefully. you can see this spacer is like going all over the place on me so you don't want to accidentally smash the spacer when it's not in its correct position so I'm going to try to fix that before I tighten it down all the way
All right, it looks like it's centered. So I'm gonna keep cranking. And there we go. And just tighten it up a fair amount, not too hard, all right? Because once again, you do not want to shear off the head of this bolt. You'll have a bad day. All right, and that's it. Now we just bolt the motor back on. Okay, so there you have it. These motors are basically like new again. Way less vibration, way less noise. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. So if you guys learned something from this video or you enjoyed the video, please make sure you like it and please get subscribed to see more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.